ZNS Total Sports, brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. Welcome to sports, everybody. November 13th is a very significant day in Bahamian sports history. It was back in 1975 when the boxing world took notice of the Bahamas, and it was all because of a talented fighter who wouldn't rest until he reached the mountaintop. Charles Fisher has the story. 39 years ago to today, history was made in France when Everett Ferguson won the WBC World Light Middleweight title over Brazilian Miguel de Oliveira. His 87-year-old mom, Cita Ferguson, relives that moment. I did feel wonderful. And until right now, today, I still feel good about that. You know why? He put the Bahamas on the map. No one did it. And then, and now, up to now, no one has done it. So how is he doing now? He isn't doing that good. See what happened? He had a, he had a fall. And after the fall, he had the surgery, and he was just down. We had to push him in the wheelchair when we taken him out, taking him to the doctor. When he on the wheelchair, he be on the walker. But praise God, he don't use none of them now. Glad to hear that, but does she have any regrets in letting him choose boxing as a career? I wouldn't say I wish he never walks because he buy this home for his mother. I didn't have to pay nothing for it. Elijah Obed, a legend in Bahamian sports and still the only world champion to date. For ZNS Toll Sports, I'm Charles Fisher. All right, thanks a lot, Charles. Well, the government secondary school's best of three volleyball championships opened up yesterday at the Donald Davis Gym. In senior boys' play, the CV Bethel Stingrays took a 1-0 lead on the CC Sweden Cobras thanks to a 25-19-25-23 victory. CV Bethel wasn't as fortunate in senior girls' play as they lost the opener of that series to C.R. Walker, 25-17-20. As for how the juniors fared, we turn it over to Julian Gibson. Benson Championship action yesterday, Junior Girls, AF Adderley Junior Girls, where they needed three sets to get past C.H. Reeves. Final score, 25-27, 25-18, and 17-15. It was good. We play hard, but we come with the win. We played well, but not like how we is usually play. Like, I, I believe we were nervous. Now in the Junior Boys game, AF Adderley, where they only needed two sets to get past T.A. Thompson, 25-16, and 25-22. I'm not satisfied until it's finished. We have to finish the job. That was good, but we played a little weak. We could have played better. We had a little, a little too much errors, but we, we, we pulled it off. Basically, my boys uh, suffer from that thing called overconfidence. They become over, they've been winning so long. They, they haven't lost a match or a set. And so, therefore, they're so overconfident now. They think everybody's going to bother on them. So, I think it's a good wake-up call today than I do. We got to play better because we don't usually play like us and poorly like us. But we went up to the Easter. Yeah, the champions, and nobody Reporting for ZNS Total Sports, I am Julian Gibson. Thanks a lot, Julian. Now, the private school's best of three softball championships also getting underway yesterday at Freedom Farm. In senior boys' play, the NCAA Crusaders pulled off the upset, taking Game 1 from SAC 15-13. SAC also went down in Game 1 of the Junior Girls Series 7-5 to St. Andrews. On the junior boys' side, SAC got a scale there as well, but they were able to win Game 1 against QC 13-12. As for the senior girls, SAC had a relatively easy time there. They beat up on St. Anne's, a final of 13-3. Still talking softball, men's national team manager Godfrey Gully Burnside wants to put more of an emphasis on youth development moving forward, and that means traveling around the country to find the best possible talent. We need funds to be able to go to four, all the family islands, make an assessment of all the players, and give all those players opportunities. Look what we went to Grand Bahama last year. Look what we found a diamond in the rough. You know, Quentin Road, 16 years old. Where is he now? He's in the instructional league in Arizona for the Cincinnati Reds. So therefore we have abundance of talents like uh, Quinton Roll and others who are around here that we need to look for and have them and, uh, come to our national team workouts and try to be a part of our national program. You know I'm all about youth development. And so if I can have uh, 18 young ball players, 18 to 25 going to the national team, I have no difficulty with it. 
Cuba is known as a sports power around the world, and according to Cuban ambassador to the Bahamas, His Excellency Ernesto Guzman, their sports prowess can be enhanced even further should certain restrictions be lifted. Sports teams, they cannot go freely to, to the U.S. to participate in sports events. Uh, and the Bahamas, in that case, is a very good example because this year we organized a, a judo tournament here in Nassau with the participation of the Cuban team and the participation of the U.S. team also, and the Bahamian team, of course. But uh, it will be easier and logic if we can organize those kind of events in Cuba or in the U.S., but we cannot do it because of the embargo. And that will do it for sports. Have a good evening, everybody. This is ZNS Total Sports, brought to you by 4th Terrace Diagnostic Center.